What's up, guys? Welcome to another update video. So, yes, this is uploading on Saturday. Unfortunately, we were one day late. Uh, ran into a little bit of issues towards the end of the update, and um, when, when Dark added his stuff, it just sort of made pretty much guaranteed we were going to be delayed an, an extra day. But we're here, ready to go, and it is live. So, first things, Craft Web Radio spec, boom. That was like the last thing I just did, so it's fresh on my mind. Uh, don't, don't, good. Get out of here. Um, yeah, so the main things we have in the in the update are four new inventions. So anytime there's like a new thing you can make with the schematic, it's going to be called an invention. So if I ever say there's a new invention coming out, that's what I'm referring to. Uh, so the, the, the new ones that are in the schematic shop, three of them are available from Old X normal schematic shop. And one of them is in the Donator store and PVM, or actually Adventure Point store. It was originally called PVM store. Blah, 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 blah. This is one of those videos where normally I would either edit it or delete it, but I know I'm going to forget to edit it, and I don't want to delete it because the last few takes were shittier, so... <laughs> Embrace the suck. Anyways, uh, moving on. The component transmute is the very... Let me get uh, more monies. Give me more. Give me monies. Give me some monies. Good. Okay. Just because so I can examine and kind of show you what it looks like. Component transmute. We have the magic jewelry polish and then we have the ring of thanos so first up did i buy one i did buy one. Oh, this is the treasure finder 27769 this is the one that's in the donator store we'll talk about that in a sec i i, I forgot that about that anyway so a component transmute is pretty simple you can turn your rare components into other versions of components so obviously you it's it's only ten thousand rare per each transaction but then the amount you exchange is you know, based on this, so you'd be, you're basically turning in 75,000 sp spiritual and 10,000 rare into corrupt. This one is probably the the, the most useless, or least useful, I don't know, but, um, you know, it's maybe somebody will find a use for it. And then you can also uh, turn them into lucky, generics into lucky. This is probably the best one, because lucky is one of the harder components to get, and obviously generic is easy as can be, and then rare, I mean, if you don't need rare, then yeah, I imagine lucky is probably the one, the main one. And then also Uber, it's pretty much a straight one-for-one -one swap, 10,000 rare, 10,000 crystal for 10,000 Uber. Um, so there's that. Uh, it's not, you know, obviously not an amazing thing, but I figured, you know, rare components are one of those kind of niche components where they're they're rare <laughs> it's obviously the name of it right but there isn't a whole lot of uses now and they're always going to kind of be a secondary it's kind of hard to explain my intention for them but they're they're meant to be like a secondary component usually they're never really going to be the main component now obviously there there will probably be some things that get released here and there that have like one million or five hundred thousand rare component costs or whatever, you know, I'm just saying. But, like, for, for the most part, rare components are meant to just kind of be, like, a special secondary. Similar to Uber, but Uber, uh, as you'll see, you know, a lot in the future, Uber's going to set its dominance as one of the main components. Uh, it makes no difference. It's just kind of how I'm thinking about it in my head when I'm designing updates. That's that's the only reason I mentioned it at all. Uh, we have the Magic Jewelry Polish. So, if we examine this, three Magic Oyster. That's... That's not the right... That's not right. I, I didn't change that. Rip. Ignore that. Okay, so let me find... Okay, so I see what the issue is. The treasure finder. Yeah, the treasure finder and the magic jewelry polish somehow got switched. I, uh, I'll fix that next update, but yeah. So for the magic jewelry polish, what you need is three old ax lube, 100,000 organic, crystal, and uber components. And then to make the treasure finder 2077... You need three magic oysters, 100 cash caskets, 200,000 crystal, and 500,000 lucky. I'll get more into that in a bit, but I just figured I'd explain it. Uh, yeah, I, see, I was going to say, I was like, I could have sworn it worked. So why doesn't it work? It's because I'm, I'm dumb and flipped them. Anyways, Ring of Thanos is the last one. It does work correctly good. So you combine all four of the Dagonoth King imbued rings, Archer, Berserker, Seers, and Warrior, plus 250,000 components, and you make the Ring of Thanos, which I'll just spawn one and let you see. That's not the right ID. Rhyming unintentionally. All right, Ring of Thanos, pretty simple ring, nothing too fancy about it, but it has the combined stats of all of the mentioned rings. Does it not have prayer bonus? Do, do none of them have prayer bonus? It feels off to me, but I, I, maybe they don't. I guess they don't have prayer bonus. But it has the plus 8 strength, the, the plus 8 slash, the plus 12. I'm, 
I swear, it feels like something's missing, but I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll double check and make sure nothing's missing from this ring, but it's supposed to have all of those rings that I just mentioned combined. And then also just has this random nifty feature where you can teleport home for no extra reason other than it, why not, right? Okay, so moving over to the donator store. Again, we have the treasure finder 277. And if you didn't know, the level next to them is the required level needed. So 55 for the transmute, 75 for the polish, 90 for Thanos, and then of course 69 for this. So what this does when you make it, uh, I believe I can remember the ID because I'm super, super smart. Yeah, and then I can remember the ID for this because I'm super, super smart again. So you get this little box right here, Treasure Finder 2077. Use it on a clue. Boom. It does exactly what you thought it was going to do. It is essentially the magic pearl and auto-completes all your clues. Now, somebody has mentioned before it does not count as a clue completed uh, or doesn't like it or anything like that. It's not supposed to. I think if, if you really want that, if you want to say you've completed a bunch of clues, I think you'd have to do a bunch of clues. I think if we're going to make it so that the, the treasure finder is the one doing it for you, I'm not going to make it. Now, I don't have like a super strong opinion on that. If you really, really think it should be the other way, then let me know. But that's why I haven't done anything yet. That's my mindset. I think that since the treasure finder is doing the hard work for you, you don't get the little number to be increased. So then I think the only thing I didn't really go into full detail on would be the polish. So the polish is kind of self-explanatory. Magic jewelry polish. What's that going to do, right? It does something with jewelry and it's got magic. So this is how you'll imbue uh, jewelry. So that you can imbue all of the, the Dagonoth King rings mentioned before. You can imbue Salve Amulet, which we'll get into in a little bit. Uh, you can imbue Ring of Suffering. You can imbue the Trezinus, Tyrannical, Ring of the Gods. Uh, is that it? All of the jewelry you're supposed to be able to imbue will now be imbued this way. In the future, I do want to still add Nightmare Zone. That is still a plan. And you'll be able to imbue things through Nightmare Zone. But for now, and as an additional way to imbue things, Magic Jewelry Belch. Okay, so well, the reason I'm on my little test server here is we have the... Uh, I'm not actually on the live game. If, I don't even know if you noticed that, but... Teleport to my house just because this was also added in the update. You can now make the undead combat majigger. Do I still have the... Yeah, there it is. The undead combat majigger. And it now functions. I believe it all. Oh, actually, it didn't function before, but it didn't work. So you would have no way of knowing that it didn't function. Um, Fire 1511. All right, so we hit it with that. We take that off. And then you see we hit three less. Boom. So that functions. And so then what was added also with the update is salve amulets are now completely fixed. Uh, I'll sort of just probably just show you the notepad. It's a little easier to, to so you can see. So the normal salve amulet, the one that we just we just just bought from the adventure point shop without any upgrades at all, gives you a plus fifteen percent damage accuracy boost to only melee. Now, if you enchant it, now this is what you, you use the Tarn's Diary for. Enchanting is from Tarn's Diary. So uh, if you have that book, you use the book on the Salve Amulet, you'll enchant it, and you'll turn it into this, where it's going to have a 20% damage accuracy boost to melee. Now, previously, this amulet did not do anything at all. It, it had no functionality whatsoever. So, so if you were using the Salve Amulet E before, it, it did nothing. But now it does. So... It does this. Uh, so then if you imbue it, now the imbuing is the magic jewelry polish. So if you use magic jewelry polish, let's just, I'll just show you. 44271. We use it on here. It's going to imbue it. So now it is I instead of what the E would be. And then now, now right now, it has 15% damage accuracy boost to all styles. Now if you enchant it with the Tarn's Diary, you get Solve Amulet EI, which is going to have a 20% damage boost to all style. I fucked this up to yeah yeah to, 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 that's to 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 melee that to i i super fucked this up wait wait did i not okay there we go there we go <laughs> now it's fixed so that was pretty unnecessarily confusing but hopefully it'll all should be good now it should be clear for the future no problems moving on it's essentially the same as old school the only thing that's different is i added a five percent boost uh, to, to the other styles. In the in the live game, it doesn't give 20% to, to other styles. It gives only 15%. And I just figure that's pointless. I assume it's some sort of balancing reason, but I don't care. So I just, I, I made it, I made it the flat rate for all of them to make it easy. So the last big thing we're going to talk about this one is going to be a lot more of a controversial update. Um, at least I think, because it's sort of been a little iffy for some people. 
hardcore Ironman status. This is something that's come up. It came out a lot on Revival 1. It was something that, uh, it wasn't too bad, but I mean, it did come up now and again. What usually happens is you'll play hardcore Ironman, you'll progress, you might max, and then you die, and you quit. That's essentially the the life path of every single hardcore. You, you quit, and you die, and then you quit, right? And from a server standpoint, we, we don't want to lose any players we can. I mean, we're a small server. We, we need every player we can get. So to just constantly lose players to to quitting is, is not... I mean, we, we want to try to reduce that any way we can. So another thing that, that you also have to factor in with hardcore deaths is, did they die legitimately? Did they just die in normal circumstances? Everything was normal? They just, ah, they forgot to eat. Or did they die to a bug or a glitch? Because the last two big hardcore Ironmen that have died have both kind of died to bugs. And that's real. I mean, that's not that's not great, right? That's that, that's the absolute worst way to die. I, I would definitely, I mean, I could definitely understand quitting or not wanting to play the serve anymore if that's how it ended up going. And there's always going to be stuff like that in the future. I mean, I can't, I can never guarantee you we're going to be bug free. I mean, that's something even, you know, old school obviously can't do. Uh, and so Rootskip 3 has a hardcore Iron Man system where you can get multiple lives. You can, I believe you can earn them three different ways. You can even purchase them. I, I'm not sure the exact like ways you purchase them, but it's, it's difficult to do. They're not like just free lives, essentially. You would really have to commit to them. And I believe you only get so many. So I talked to Dark about that, and this is uh, Dark's code. Dark came up with this, so all the credit and support goes to him. Uh, we decided to add a multiple live system to Revival. So if you are a hardcore Iron Man right now, you can come to Evil Bob, and he will currently tell you how much lives you have. Each time you buy a life, the price doubles. I've already done this a couple times, so it should be a higher price. Yeah, it should be higher. So it starts off at 5000 If you buy a second life, the price is going to be 10000 if you can see, this is my third life. The price is going to be 20000 If I buy one more life, it's 40,000 adventure points. If you play the server, you'll understand adventure points are not crazy easy to get. I know I have a billion, but that's because I cheated. On my legit account on the main game right now, that's after buying four scrolls. I have about 6,000 points. So if I didn't buy the four scrolls, I'd be over 10k for sure. But that's a significant amount. So it's not like anybody's just going to get these lives for free. And you can just go, oh, I can just die a million times. You know, it's not even a hard mode anymore. I understand that there's going to be a, a sense of a lack of prestige or a lack of difficulty now or associated with the mode. I understand that. But again, I think the importance is that people are having fun with the mode. If you, I mean, like the only time you really notice the mode is when you die, right? Like, uh, uh. I understand that the, the prestige is important, and that's something that we're really uh, keen on keeping. I think we're going to have things for like if you have if you've never died or you haven't used any of the extra lives, then you'll you'll get some sort of significance. I'm thinking a red whip. I, I don't want to go too crazy with like colored whips. We already have the white one, but I just think a red whip would be cool and would be a justifiable way to show off that you're like you haven't died yet or you haven't used any extra lives. And then the plan is in the future, we want to add an extreme mode. We're going to add an extreme mode where it's essentially what hardcore was, where if you die, uh, you're banned. If you die, you are banned from hardcore and your account is deleted. There is, there will, or not hardcore, extreme. There will never be any second chances on extreme. I don't care if I get hacked, someone guesses my, my password and they teleport you to the wilderness and get you killed. Like it does not matter what happens doesn't matter the, the server gets shut down like in the middle of you at Zora it does, nothing 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 will save you you're banned no second chances no your account will be deleted like there's no warnings so for people who really want that sort of you know prestige I think that that, that might be a better mode and then we're also going to make it so that if you haven't died or used extra lives you will be able to easily trans uh, tr transform your hardcore mode into that mode if that's something like if you're a hardcore mode right now and you don't want to use any extra lives and you're not a fan of this change then you can basically just keep playing like you're playing and as long as you don't die or, or use the second live systems or anything like that at the at the point we add the extreme mode you'll you'll be able to transfer to that and you know play like play, play you know basically you're kind of cheating because you didn't have to die but i mean if you didn't die anyways then you wouldn't have died in the extreme mode so um so anybody who has died recently uh on hardcore iron man mode you can contact us and we will give you a once uh, a free you know life back uh, the two people that that I mentioned, uh, Sarazel, he died to uh, basically. It's it's not, it's 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 more of a uh, an unintended side effect rather than a glitch or bug. But it's still something that that's not it's not it shouldn't be there. And uh, if you're not aware of it, you can easily die to it. I'll I'll give you an example right now of of, of how Sarazel died. 
So if you use an entrance like this and you try to put prey on, if you notice, I clicked it, right? But it didn't turn on. So there's like this weird, just, I, I'm not sure if it's only prayers. So right there, like I clicked it and nothing happened. It's not like it's delayed. Like you can legit click it and it, it just says, nah, we're cool. So that was, I'm pretty sure that's how Sarazel died. And then I believe uh, five, uh, not five, <laughs> five. Uh, Meat. Meat was the other one who recently died. He died. Uh, we had we, we were having lag spikes during the day, and he died. And I think a lot of the other people were on when it happened, and they were able to confirm that that's you know what happened to him. So, um, you know, I uh, it's just it's like the the mode for me. I've always been a, a, not against the mode, but I've never played it. I've never liked the mode because it, exactly what happens is what happens, right? You die and then you quit, and it's all like everything was pointless. I I just I, you know. And then another thing is, like, the opportunities, it, uh, you know, it keeps you from, right? Like, look at Bodhi. Bodhi made his hardcore, and he had his hardcore. I mean, Bodhi's had a million hardcores. They always die. They always die to random things, some stuff out of his controls, you know, AFK or whatever. It doesn't matter, right? But his recent one, he, he skipped Group Iron Man. He was going to be a part of Foe and all of their Group Iron Man. They were going to have this massive team. And he skipped it because his hardcore was doing really good and he wanted to stick with that. And then immediately dies, like, after Group Iron Man comes out, he, he misses that. And then he quit the game for a couple of months. And that just, like, that kind of thing is just, like, always going to happen. It's always going to be a part of it. Even with multiple lives, but at least we're doing everything we can to give you guys opportunities. At least you know if you buy your first life with 5,000 adventure points, you know, okay, if no matter what happens, if I DC, I'm, I'm at least covered right here. I, it obviously it lets you be a little more risky, but it, but again these these adventure points are not are not crazy common. They're not you have to earn them too. You can't just like <laughs> you know you can't just buy them from the donator store. You can't just uh, you know I mean if you if you go to if you watch my farming video, I made a video on how to farm adventure points. If you it's like 500 points an hour, so that's gonna take 10 hours just to get one hardcore life back. And then the next one is going to take double that, and then double that, and then double it. Like, it's going to get crazy. So I think it should still be fun. I think it should still have prestige, but I think it's also going to be a little bit better. You have you have a, you have a second chance, basically. And and as Dark Dark coded in, he he uh, made the, the dialogue for the NPC. I really like what he put. He put, you know, since this is revival, you're, you're, we're going to give you another chance. And I really liked that. I, I felt that that accurately portrayed what we were trying to accomplish. So I get that this one might be a little tough. It might be a little weird for some people, um, but hopefully people will like it. So just got a couple other, you know, small things to talk about real fast for this. A Black Lotus is now in the Ruby's Trinket Shop. This gives you dark components, costs some money. Uh, and then her, uh, the stock also, but I don't want to buy, but it restocks faster. So that's nice. And then just some other really small stuff, like some things that disassemble now, and then uh, stuff like Beads of the Dead now provide 20 prayer bonus instead of 35. I'll talk about that one a little bit because it's a little more... Uh, the reason why is because starting off at 35 was just really high. Like, originally in the code, I was only going to do 25, but I changed it last second because I thought it wouldn't be good enough. But once we got into the game, I saw how good it really was, and also how common the Beats of the Dead are as a drop. Like, you're, if you've done the event, you you probably have a pair, right? You probably have a couple. So they weren't very rare, um, and not a, at least not at that rare. And we also don't want in-game things to come from the event and just, I don't know, we just felt like it was too, it's too high. Any new prayer item we make in the future is going to always be, like, based off of that, right? It's always going to be based off the previous highest one. So if we're already starting at 35, we're, you know, we're starting off rough. And it's going to be really hard to make those kind of items, uh, you know, in the future. So that was why I wanted to change it. I think most people are fine with it still being 20. It's still the best prayer amulet in game. But that's going to do it. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, I, I was going to talk about the survey results, but honestly, the survey results, it's just like... <laughs> It's like 50-50. Everybody kind of said exactly what, you, what you'd what you think people would say. People, um, like most opinions on, on the polls were like 50-50, 30-30 splits. Like, I really couldn't find anything conclusive. People were just gave me their opinions and, um, you know, I'm going to hopefully, like, learn from them. Like, like one person gave me the, uh, their opinion that they wanted more items, uh, more bundles or more, like, stuff like that in the donor store. We used to do a lot of, like, random stuff like that in Revival 1. And uh, we stopped doing that. Um, th the reason why I stopped doing it is, is just one reason. So when you're looking at our store, you have no clue what this is. Big event bundle. You have no way it's in your sh it's in your thing. You have, there's you, you can't see descriptions. 
I'm not sure why it's obviously an issue on our end, on the server's end, because there's a way to write descriptions, but there's no way to see it. So like, that's why I don't like making these bundles, because if you wanted to buy either of these bundles, you would have to like look at the Discord or look at the forums. And, and the fact that it's not easy and obvious here, where you're actually going to spend your money, I just don't like. That, that's the main reason why we didn't. Uh, I messed around with it a little bit and added, you know, obviously those two new ones. We'll see. Uh, um, just just remember to always, you know, you, you wouldn't think people would put would, would donate without understanding what they were donating for, but it happens. And it's happened a lot in the past too. So, it, you know, that's that's just why I was concerned. But um, that was the only reason I stopped. But if you have a, ever have any feedback like that or any feedback at all on anything, I would be happy to hear it. I always appreciate, you know, trying, you know, your guys' feedback. That's how we're going to make the game better. Because, you know, obviously all I know is what I know, right? All I know is what I know and what I feel and what I think. So that's what I can code. But you know my what i want what i think what i feel isn't going to be what everybody else wants so i have to get your guys opinion and that's that's going to be the best way to, to make the server the best for the most people that's the goal